Okay, class, this is going to be section 5-7. Five, 5-7 seven. Five, seven is integrating to get your inverse trig functions. So I'm going to do this a little different. I am going to start with the formula, and then we're going to do some examples from there. 1 over the square root of a squared minus u squared du is equal to arc sine of u over a plus c. If you remember from yesterday's lesson, the derivative of arc sine u is u prime over 1 minus u squared. So if you look at this formula, it is the same except for instead of a 1, we have an a squared. So for example, if we were working the problem 1 over the square root of 4 minus x squared dx. <clears throat> Look at that problem, you might initially think that your u would be 4 minus x squared. But the derivative of that is negative 2x, and there's nothing in the problem to substitute in for. There is no x value. So then you need to realize that this is an inverse trig problem. Out to the side, I would write that my a value is 2, and that my u value is x. <coughs> du is equal to dx. So when I do my substitution, I have 1 over the square root of my a squared, or 2 squared, minus u squared du. That is the formula for arc sine. So now I can just put equals arc sine of u, which is x, over my a value, which is 2. <coughs> the other two formulas of your inverse trig functions are the integral of 1 over a squared plus u squared du which is 1 over a arc tangent of u over a plus c. And the third one is 1 over u square root of u squared minus a squared du, which is 1 over a arc secant absolute value of u over a plus c. Remember our derivative formulas were just negatives. So like my derivative of arc cosine of u was the same as the derivative of arc sine of u, it was just negative. So there are only going to be three integrals formulas that will equal inverse trig functions. So let's look at another example. The integral of 1 over 2 plus 9x squared dx. My u will equal 3x. My a value is the square root of 2. My du equals 3 dx. I only want it to be dx, so 1 third du equals dx. Now I'm going to make my substitution. In for 1 dx, I am going to put a 1 third du. I put my a squared here plus my u squared. Well, that is the formula for inverse or arc tangent. <coughs> the formula says I put 1 over a. I already have a coefficient of 1 third. So 1 over a will be 1 over 3 root 2 arc tangent, and then u over a, so 3x over square root of 2 plus c. You just need to follow the formulas. One more example. The integral of 1 over x, square root of 4x squared minus 9, 
dx, u equals 2x, du equals 2dx, my a value is 3. I don't want this to be 2dx, I just want it to be 1dx, so I divide by my 2, and I do my substitution. Coefficient of a half, 1 over. Now, <clears throat> the problem I run into here is that my formula says this has to be a u and this has to be u squared. Well, my u is 2x, but I only have an x here. So what can I do to make that the same? I'm going to have to multiply the top and the bottom by a 2. So I'm going to add a 2 there. Then if I put 2x here, I'll be able to make my substitutions with my u. So I have a 2 in the denominator, 2x is my u. Then I have a u squared minus a squared, du. That's my formula for inverse secant. I have to take 1 over a. So I have a 2 in the numerator. I've already pulled out a 2, so I'm going to put that over a, which is 3. Arc secant of the absolute value of u over 3 plus c. So I want to rewrite that so it's 1 third. Arc secant absolute value of 2x over 3 plus c. You can cancel these before you integrate if you like. <clears throat> it's up to you. These are not seen very often on the AP test. They are in the curriculum. You may have one as a multiple choice or you may not have any on the test at all. <clears throat> but it is good to recognize those kind of problems. The problem I'd like for you to do or try is on page 385. I'd like for you to just do number one. We'll work on the rest of problems in class tomorrow. Good luck.